Hi, welcome to our next vlog on self-care and how to gain a healthier, happier version of you. I'm Sophia from Tried and Wellbeing and I'm a mind and wellbeing coach, author, martial art instructor and personal trainer. In this series, I'm focusing on weight loss with tools and practices that you can do quickly and easily. Most of you listening to this have probably tried many of the conventional methods to lose weight and found that they're largely unsuccessful. I don't know precisely what they were, but if you're on this site, then you're searching for something that's either got better results or that is more long-standing. As mentioned previously, I'm not gonna focus on diets, nor am I giving any medical advice. But this is for those of you that are healthy and know that you have bad practices, realize that bad diets aren't sustainable, and not always balanced for your long-term physical or even financial health. If you need specific exercise programs or more advice um, than this short blog can offer, just send me a message or an email. Now you might be feeling disillusioned at this time with your results, but hopefully with my series, you'll be on a health journey using different practices each week to help you develop new neural pathways and to develop better habits, new habits, and rewire those unhealthy ones. Over the past three weeks, we've been over six practices, and I recommend that you watch these first and scan through them and get a feel for what they were and perhaps practice them. Because each practice is designed to help you in a segmented, balanced way to achieve your goals. And by doing this, to develop new habits, new practices, and overall well-being in a more congruent, long-lasting manner for you. If while you're doing these other emotional issues do crop up and you discover that you may be holding something back and they may be preventing you from being healthy what I'd like you to do is just send me a message or check my other blogs or website because I've got a lot of other different tools there to help you with any emotional blockers I've got a book that's out um, with a seven hacks to help you with more specific rewiring if you need a little bit more depth but what I can assure you of though if you are following these strategies you will be moving in a path to a happier, healthier you. So by now, you're noticing the changes in your self-talk. You're interrupting that negativity more effectively. You've got a more positive internal dialogue. You're drinking more water. And you're flushing those kidneys regularly. Hopefully you're enjoying more colorful meals with a variety of fruit and vegetables. You'll have identified your role model so that you can relate to them, copy them, learn what works for them and what will op optimally work for you. And hopefully you'll be moving more and doing more each day and measuring what you're doing. And finding, of course, time to check in with yourself and just to reboot. Overall, you should be eating cleaner now, moving more and feeling better. You might have even started to see changes in your clothing as well and how it fits around your waist possibly. This week, I just have one strategy for self-care. And this one's a bit more involved. And that's why I've just chosen to give you just one for you to focus on for this week. And I want you to think about how you see yourself. You're going to delve a little bit deeper into yourself. And by doing so, I want you to find out how you might be sabotaging your own health. Yeah, I did say sabotaging. And I truly believe that quite often we make decisions around food and exercise that really are unhealthy, unhelpful, and have long-term consequences on our health. And by addressing these, I'm hoping that you'll then be able to catch yourself before you do that unhealthy practice. For in the words of that famous author, Maya Angela, forgive me if I didn't say it properly, when you know better, you do better. So I've now discussed with you how to make the easy changes. And now over this next week, I want you to make a health, heartfelt study on why you're not choosing health first. Why are you not following my six steps? What's holding you back? You don't have time. Well, many busy people manage to eat well and still fit in movement. Look at Richard Branson's walking meetings. He was having just another way to get a few more steps in and still conduct business. I'm not saying that you do that, but if you are making excuses, there's a reason. And I want to put it to you that if you're not following my six steps, there is something else going on. Now this can be quite confronting, and this is why I've left it till further down the track, and I know many of you may turn off or switch channels now, but what if you don't? What if you actually recognise not just what you're doing, but why you're doing it? Can you imagine then how well this may help you in other areas of your life and your well-being? 
what I usually find when working with people, that there is some sort of gain that they're getting by not being consistently healthy and not consistently following those very easy practices. And here's what I need to say, that I'm in no way saying don't celebrate life with that food and drink. What I'm said saying is does it need to be excessive or does it need to be so frequent? Why do you need to have such big meals? Or so much wine, or the extra cookies? I do realize that sugar for some people can be addictive, but if you're filling up with really nutritious food and you're adding in the flavors, you'll find it, find it will probably help with those sugar cravings. And if you're gradually reducing your sugar intake, but not feeling like you're denying this at yourself, then you shouldn't really feel like you're missing out on anything. So I want you to think about what did you do? What did you see? What did you feel, hear, or think before you made that decision to have something unhealthy or before you decided not to get up and move. I put it to you, I really do, that something happened. Maybe you felt the need for comfort food. Maybe you told yourself you were tired and you needed a boost. Maybe you were just too tired to prepare a healthy meal. Or maybe you were gaining something else by simply doing that. Maybe it was a bit of Dutch courage, some sort of emotional relief. Maybe it was some sort of trigger, an external trigger that caused you to overeat or eat something rubbish. I do remember working with one lady and each time she was with her mother and her mother amped up the complaining and the criticism, the client would actually go and search her muffins. She associated escape and relief and negativity with some sort of enjoyment when she had these muffins. She'd been doing it for so long, she just thought she had muffin cravings and a huge sweet tooth. And when we, when we delved in a little bit further, we actually found that this was her coping strategy for anxiety and stress. And once she identified it was a gain to help her feel better, she was able to take easier steps, healthier steps, and get on top of those cravings. Maybe when you were a kid, you were shown love through food. Now, there's no negative underlying issue here at all, other than someone loves you and they want to show you love and they give you food. And if someone goes to the trouble of making you a lovely meal, maybe you feel that no matter how fat or rich or uh, unhealthy it is, that it'd be rude not to eat it. Now the gain is thus that you're pleasing someone else and it's about them liking you. So it's a gain also for you. But for this week, what I really want you to think about is what happens before you make a poor food choice or before you choose not to move. Remember, I'm not restricting at this stage, just reducing brown and white foods, adding in some color in your diet, and more movement in your day. So I'm not saying summon up loads of energy for a high intensity workout. What I'd like you is to, to keep upping those steps, 10 to 12,000 a day. This week is really about discovering how you make your choices. So this week is about discovering how you make your decisions and recognizing when you make them. Do you make them late afternoon? Do you need a healthier snack then to prevent you feeling so tired? Are you comfort eating in the evening? Are you just too tired to move after work? Would it be better to squeeze in steps at lunchtime or a half hour workout or perhaps before work? Are you eating to please someone else or is your self-esteem somewhat low and a why bother attitude kicks in? Look, the one thing I know for sure is that after this week, once you know why you do what you do. There'll be no reason to hide this knowledge from yourself. In fact, you won't actually be able to unlearn it. You will begin to recognize those triggers as they crop up each day or each week and your choices around those triggers and recognizing them, giving you a different choice now to proceed. Now, if you've hung in there with me for this long, you now know you have the tools to feel better every single day. Some days will be easier, sure I get that, than others. But if you're choosing to change, you're gaining back the power for yourself to live a healthier, happier life. So on next, until next week, please practice this next strategy because the more you investigate this week, the more you'll learn about yourself. By all means, keep working on the other six strategies and notice how you're feeling better each week. Let me know how you go by posting below or send me a message. I want you to live your best, healthiest, happiest life, and don't you deserve it? So if you like what I've got to say, click on the button below and subscribe, and stay tuned until next week to hear how you can keep on feeling better 
and get some real workable strategies and techniques. Until then, I'm sending much love.